Oh, like, that's why they have these bolstered seats. They hold you well. They hold you. Oh, you. you. Oh. Scumbag. Come on. For those who couldn't see, which is all of you, um, <laughs> that was a truck pulling Just, out about two miles an hour and then immediately turned back into a lot right in front of it. Goonery. <laughs> We're doing a 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Ti today. I don't know how I feel about the name. The Stelvio. Stel it's Stelvio. It sounds like a stupid supporting character in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> it really does. Alas, poor Stelvio. Poor Stelvio. He <laughs> fell down the stairs and died. <laughs> yeah, it really does. The nomenclature on these cars is kind of confusing because yeah. this is the Ti. Stelvio. But it doesn't say TI anywhere on it. It says it's, Q4. It says Q4, on the back. Yeah. but it's not the Quadrifolio, which you think Q4 Quadrifolio. I'm, mm. I'm amazed that you pronounce that yeah. properly. Quadrifoglio. Like Quadrifoglio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <So> anyway. <laughs> this is a very similar car to the Julia, which we reviewed recently. Yeah, it's the same engine. Yep. But it really, it's not that much slower than the Julia. You're looking at 5.4 seconds to 60 versus 5.1, neither of which is particularly fast, but... So this has a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Two liter. Two liter that produces 280 horsepower. Yeah. You do have these paddles, so going around twisty roads like this is moderately fun for a big hulking SUV. Yeah, you don't want to eat it around the roads, but it's pretty fun. I like that. I really, paddle shifters have grown on me. And they there's a little bit of go there. on me too, yeah. Like this thing, it doesn't feel super slow on the back roads. Yeah. Three, two, one. super fast but I didn't see much delay like I was watching you when you yeah, clicked those, and when it shifted. Those paddles those shifts were pretty much instant yeah. I didn't really notice any lag. I appreciate that I'd rather have a slow car that shifts instantly like that than a faster one that's got lag. Yeah I would agree. Let's start with the looks. The looks. The grille is very typically alpha. Yeah, I love which it. Which I like. I love Alfa Romeo's front grills. Yeah, very, very attractive cars. Now I noticed there wasn't a front license plate on this car and nor is there a license plate in the windshield. Hmm, interesting. So we're breaking is, the law. We are breaking the law driving this. Oh well. Overall, like this kind of fits into the price of this because I think it, for the looks, it looks very exotic mm -hmm. for the price. It looks cooler than any other crossover or SUV, in my opinion, because it's different. Yeah. The dash, it, this is cheap material. I'm, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and, and knock it for a lot, that. A lot of it is, like, everything up here feels kind of cheap. It's like cheap plastic feeling. It's like millennial flooring gray. Like, yeah. it's like if you buy a house as a millennial and you want to put down hard, quote, hardwoods, it's going to be this color. It's like a, a grayish wood. Yeah. Um, looks really nice, but... You hit it and yeah. it feels kind of cheap. That's gross. It's yeah. not. It's plastic. The actual dash, the screen is. I don't know. It's I horrible. like how they integrated it. I like that it's not just a square that sticks out. It yeah. is. It's got its own nice big it's, black it has panel. Like some swoops. It's got some swoopies to it, which is cool. You do have cup holders in the front. We found them. Practicality. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We found them. It takes maybe more than a couple idiots to yeah. discover where the cup holders are. But they do exist. But you do have that. You have a USB charging port here in the front, which is cool. As well as a 12 volt right next to it. Yep. Not for cigarettes anymore. A 12 volt charger. Um, <laughs> the the material on top of the dash, it's it's not, it's like a, I don't know, it's no nicer than in my Focus, which is kind of mm, yeah. disappointing for the, for the price. But it's not bad. It's squishy, rubbery, whatever it is. I don't know. It's the standard material for the top of your dash. Then you move down further onto like the, the side panels and the seats. It's this nice brown leather or leather-ish. I'm not I don't think it's actually leather. Leather-esque. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But that's the look they were going for is nice leather. Um, and I'm glad they did that. It's it's an impressive appearance. It looks classy, it looks clean. Um, um you got like Pretty good storage space here in these bins yeah. on the door, which is nice. Yeah, I was just thinking that. We've got these actually nice felt lined um, side pockets here. You got like a little coin pocket here, you got a handle pocket here, you've got a mesh 
pocket there. There's a lot of storage in this car, which I really appreciate. Yeah, there's quite a bit of space. Um, you have a lot of space in the back too. Oh, yeah. I don't know exactly how much off the top of my head, but I'd say you could fit at least one of me. At least, I I think. Yeah, I that's think my that's, scientific that's, opinion. That's a reasonable estimate, I think. Yeah. Now, my one gripe so far that I found with this is that I was like, how do you open the center console? There's no button or anything. So I found out you just got to yank it. And that's kind that's of, it. it's kind of classless to me. Uh, you do have, that's the auxiliary yeah. cable port and another USB port in yeah. there. You got little dividers in here, um, felt line dividers, and it's it's useful. There's You can put a little bit of stuff in there. You can fit like, I don't know, four Wendy's cheeseburgers. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, but you got you to <laughs> yank it and slam it to open and close it. So, eh. That was weird. Yeah. So I let off the gas, the engine automatically shut off to save gas, which I don't like. Yeah. Um, and when I let off the brake and put my foot on the gas, it took about a second to notice Yeah, there was a, notice there it. was a delay before. Like that's dangerous, mm. honestly. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I don't like that. I don't know how I feel about that. I will say right off the oh. bat, this thing feels super smooth. Yeah, it is. This is a nice backup camera too, actually. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty high, high resolution. Yeah. It might just be because it's a tiny screen, so you don't need a super high resolution to look good. Maybe. But it's not bad. Yeah. This yep. thing takes zero effort. Yeah, it's very smooth. Yeah. yeah, it's a really, really, really smooth ride. I'm gonna put this in D, which I assume is dynamic. Let's see if it tightens up a little bit. It does. Significantly. Wow. That's cool that you get those different features, yeah. though. Like those different modes you can set them in. And you don't have to go through a single menu to change your driving mode. It's just right there. Yeah. It's all in the uh, selector. It's a little dial, yeah. Yeah. Fuel economy is okay. Yeah. It's 22 mpg in the city and 28 on the highway. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's like about that's not what bad. I'd, yeah, it's about what I'd expect in this. Yeah. And if you've seen our Alfa Romeo Giulia review, you know that we talked about the paddle shifters and that. The paddle shifters are identical, yeah. I feel like, in this, to the Giulia. They hang out here. Like, they're not actually connected to the wheel. They're, they're attached to the steering yeah, column. Yeah, they're attached to the column. And they just kind of float there, which... I kind of like is it. It's starting to grow on me, yeah. actually. They're always in the same spot. You know where they are. Yeah. Um, and I do still think it's cool to have paddle shifters in an SUV. Yeah, I agree. That is kind of fun. You can feel a bit like a boy racer or a girl <laughs> racer while you're driving this. In your crossover. You, yeah, while you're driving your kids to soccer practice. Yeah. You can feel like your inner racer. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say, like, early impressions, I prefer this over the Julia. Really? Yeah. Why? It's more spacious. <laughs> I don't like yes. how the, the Julia felt cramped. Like I was like tucked up against the steering wheel, no matter where I put okay, my I seat. I do remember the getting in the getting into the Julia is weird. That was because stupid. The door is it's like, like too far off. forward. Yeah, it's yeah. too far forward. It's weird. It's it's a weird car getting into. This has none of those issues. This feels like a normal car. You can get into yeah. it and drive it. Well, it feels normal, but it looks Italian. Yeah. I will say now that I'm driving this. I'm running into the same problem that I had with the with the Julia, and What's that is, that? I am a, a I like to drive casually with my arm at my side and my hand at the bottom of the steering wheel, unless I'm like in a dangerous situation so or traffic or something. What what prohibits that in the the bolsters on the seats? Like I there's oh yeah I should have a couple inches over here where I can just rest my arm, so I have to either go on the outside of the bolster. In which case, I don't feel as relaxed, or the inside yeah. of the bolster where I'm just like pinned to my side. I don't know. I never really thought about that until you just mentioned it right now. But like yeah. my elbows are like you got to pick. Yeah, like pretty eh. on the seat. I didn't notice it while I was in the passenger seat, but now that I'm driving, because this is how I drive casually, eh, meh, I would have to drive like a real person and put my yeah, hands. Yeah, just, just drive like a normal person. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That, that's, that's an easy <laughs> yeah. thing to fix. That's, just be normal, JT. Yeah, I know, I'm the worst. Wow. Uh, that's a, an easy problem to that fix. That is such a nitpick. Like, yeah, so like the way that I like driving is kind of uncomfortable driving. <laughs> I like to this. drive with my knees, <laughs> and the fact that there's a gas pedal makes that really hard. How dare Alfa Romeo <laughs> design it like this? Can't they think of people like me? This is the TI, as we mentioned before, uh, which is a little more expensive than the base. The base price Stelvio is about $41,000. Really reasonable. Which is pretty reasonable. This, the TI, is also pretty reasonable. It's only $44,000. Oh, wow. Uh, I'd say it's probably worth it. Yeah, I think I think it's probably worth it, that extra $3,000. Yeah. I'd, I'd pay it. Yeah. I like the paddle shifters. Yeah, I do too. I just realized one thing. I went to, to use my indicator, 
and I hit the paddle shifter instead. The the, <laughs> the indicator is shorter than the paddle shifter. Yeah, so you I have to like that. reach around. I yeah. don't like that. It's a little weird. You have to do that for the one on the right too, yeah, if you want to do windshield, windshield for wipers. the windshield wipers. Okay. Yeah, it's a little weird. That is interesting. So then um, it moves up from there to the Quadrifoglio, which is eighty thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, but the Quadrifoglio has over five hundred horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this only has two hundred and eighty horsepower. Yeah. So if you're looking for a fast, practical comfortable, car, practical and you're okay car. with paying about double the price. <laughs> yeah. I there you go. Haven't driven it, but uh, at that price, I'd be tempted to look elsewhere. I'm actually more impressed than I thought I'd be. This is maybe the first car that we've reviewed where I thought that it was going to be kind of meh. Yeah. And I'm actually kind of impressed, not going to lie. Yes, at last, I'm not the only one who's wrong about everything. Yeah, this is the first time I think that I've been like that. Very, very pleased with this. I got a soft spot for crossovers. I don't know why, they're ugly. Really? Uh, yeah, I hate them. I hate them looking at them, <laughs> but when I'm driving, I'm like, yeah, this is kind of nice. Let's get into it. Uh, starting out with performance, what do you think? Better than I expected. Yeah, I'd agree. Better than I expected. Uh, it's not the fastest car in the it's world. It's not the doesn't fastest the car in the world. Performance doesn't have the best handling, but for what it is, for what it, now, I think I'm it's I'm going to have good. to make a, a distinction here between fun factor and performance because it's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm going to give it a five for performance. Five for yeah. performance. All because right. Interesting. That is slightly lower than you rated the Julia. Yeah. Which well, I, that's about accurate, I, I guess. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. Also go with a five for um, this. Like a little bit slower than Julia. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more cumbersome to, to steer and handle around corners, but not yeah, by much. But, but still like quick enough. Yeah. Practicality, I think is good. Great. Yeah. I, um, I hesitate to say like great. Uh -huh. Uh, well, okay, it's great. Yeah. It's just not like really, really great. I mean, you've always you got in the back of your mind, wagon. Yeah. Could be a Wag wagon. Could, it could be a wagon. I'd give it... I'd give it a seven. So, yeah, that's, uh, oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> a seven. Value? Pretty good. Uh, like, yeah. For a crossover at $44,000 for this particular model, not bad. Yeah, I think it's high. I mean, I know Alfa Romeos have a very bad wrap with uh, reliability issues. Yep. So I think that the resale values of these aren't the highest in the world, especially comparatively if you got like a Toyota 4Runner, yeah. which would be about the same price as this. That's true. But still, it's cool. It looks cool for what it is. It looks cooler than a 4Runner. Yeah. I'd probably go with a six on value. Yeah. For me. Actually, you know, I'm going to knock it a little high. I'm going to give it a five actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that frees me up to do a six then. Okay. Because I think this is, uh, it's a good value for the money. Like you won't be, you won't find yourself wanting for much with this car. Yeah, I find that, but I still think if you were really getting something for value, you'd get a Toyota 4Runner yeah. or something. You would get like, it's a, just hard to beat Toyota for value. Yeah. Cool factor, like moderately high, I feel like, I don't know. I'm going to give it probably another five. <laughs> cool factor just for like me. Average. Oh, that's, that's so tough because when we say five, that's not that's not that it's bad it's uh, no it's it's average and I don't want to give it less than average because it's I mean it's cooler than other crossovers it's cooler than other crossovers I think like as far as crossovers at this price range goes this is the coolest of them yeah it's the coolest looking one but it's still a crossover. but it's still a crossover and it's still not yeah that cool I'm no gonna, one turns their heads I'm gonna give it this. a four and a half all right yeah. quality is it's passable. Like, it's acceptable, yeah. yes. It does have like some cheap feeling uh, components mm -hmm. and long-term reliability is of kind of suspect in Alfa Romeos. Yeah. So, but I mean, overall the paddle shifters are solid feeling. Mm -hmm. The steering wheel feels good. A lot of stuff feels good. The leather seats are nice. Yeah. Um, As of right now, everything feels great. I think I'd probably go with a six on quality which is the same that I gave the Julia. I, mean, yeah. I think that's fair. I'd say that's fair too. I'd put me down for a six as well. All right. And then moving on to the last fun factor, which is decent. I was um, surprised. Yeah, I was decently surprised. I was thinking this was going to be, you know, like four or five out of 10 territory, but I yeah. think it's six out of 10 territory. What did I give the Julia? You gave the Julia 5.5. And come to think of it, I'm actually going to give it a 5.5 also. I'm going to give this a 6.5 then. Really? I think it's a full point higher than the Julia. Wow. I think it's more I had almost no fun in the Julia. Yeah. Not, not almost no. I mean, less than I had hoped in that one and more than I had hoped in this one. 
Oh my god, is that the same score? Is it really? I think I get 34 flat. Julia was a 34.25. This was also a 34.25. Wow. Specifically. That's amazing. 34.25 is our average score out of 60 huh. for this car, for the 2018 Stelvio TI. I mean, yeah. it makes sense. It is the same car, really. It's just a... It really is. This is just like... This is the thick version. It looks like uh, you took a Julia TI and you stung it with a B and it got <laughs> yeah. a little bloated. You just put it in, in Photoshop this, and yeah. grab the top handle and or drag that. it up. Yeah. It literally does look like that. <laughs> We rated the uh, the Toyota 4Runner TRD a little higher than this. We rated that uh, a 35, so a little higher. Yeah, there you go. I'd, I agree with that. I'd get a Toyota over this. Seems about right. If this is your first time watching, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed the Stelvio, which is our little Shakespearean car. The Shakespeare Stelvio. Not the, not the Quadra Formaggio Four Cheese version. Anyway, this has been fun. Please don't hate us Italians. Don't hate us Italians. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yep. See you guys. Thanks. Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, Curiosity Stream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long Curiosity Stream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. Curiosity Stream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for Curiosity Stream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.